All right, let's talk about Proxmox. For the longest time, if you brought it up in a serious IT meeting, you'd probably get a polite smile and then everyone would move on. You know the reputation. It was the king of the home lab. But that whole idea is, well, it's ancient history at this point. The quiet days are over. Proxmox is making some serious noise in the professional world. So that's the big question we're really digging into today. Has Proxmox actually made the leap? Has it graduated from being a hero in the basement to something you can genuinely bet your business on? We're going to bust some myths and see what's really going on inside data centers right now. I mean, let's just cut to the chase, right? Is this thing still just a toy for tinkerers and home projects? Or can it actually handle the pressure when the stakes are real? Well, how about this for an answer? This comes straight from a syst engineer running mission-critical systems. And listen to what they're saying. This isn't a dev box or some little side project. We're talking about their entire infrastructure, the absolute core of their operations. That says a lot, doesn't it? Okay, so if it's not just for hobbyists anymore, who's actually running this stuff in the wild? You might be pretty surprised by just how serious these deployments get. And man, this list really tells a story. We're talking about hydropower plants, national internet service providers, government data centers. I mean, come on, these are places where downtime is just not an option. It's pretty clear Proxmox has earned its stripes in some seriously high stakes games. All right, let's talk about scale, because that's a big one. Check this out. A single setup, right? Over 600 virtual machines. And get this, they're running all of that on just 20 Proxmox hosts. I mean, just think about that density for a second. That's absolutely incredible. You think that's big? Okay, hold on. How about a single cluster with 200 physical nodes? Now we're talking about a scale that goes toe to toe with the big expensive legacy players. But honestly, this next part might be the most telling thing of all. The administrator for that massive 200 node cluster, they were asked why they don't pay for an official support contract. Their answer, two words, not needed. Wow, you don't get that kind of confidence from a toy. That comes from something that is just plain rock solid. So we know it can scale, that's a check. But what about the features? Can it really tick all those boxes that enterprise IT absolutely demands? Let's see how it holds up under pressure. And the answer is a huge yes. It's got all the heavy hitters, right? You've got your high availability clustering. You've got that first class Ceph integration for massive distributed storage. You've got ZFS for wicked fast local storage. And of course the Proxmox backup server or PBS to tie it all together with data protection. And the key thing here is that these aren't just add-ons, they are baked right into the core of the platform. Now, what's so smart about this is the flexibility it gives you. You get to make a choice for your smaller clusters, or maybe where you just want dead simple, high-performance storage on each machine, ZFS is an absolute beast. But when you need to go big, when you need true shared storage, crazy redundancy, and massive scale, that's what Ceph is built for. It lets you pick the right tool for your specific job. So the tech is there for sure, but let's be real, there's another huge driver behind all this. And it's the one that gets the folks holding the purse strings to sit up and pay attention. We're talking about the money. And the financial case here is, well, it's a total game changer. Just look at this real world example. A company was doing a big infrastructure refresh. They priced out the whole VMware shebang, hardware and all. Then they priced out a comparable Proxmox cluster with enterprise storage, full support, the works. The difference? It's just wild. So here's the first number that'll make your jaw drop. Nearly $400,000, poof, gone. Right off the top, an immediate upfront savings. For any IT budget on the planet, that is absolutely massive. But wait, it actually gets better. Because that's just the start. That same company calculated they'd save over $100,000 every single year on licensing costs. That's money that just stops leaving your bank account. Talk about a huge long-term win. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. It's powerful, it saves a ton of money, but what about support, right? What happens when it's two in the morning and everything's on fire? That's the ultimate enterprise question. So let's tackle it. And this quote right here, it completely flips the script on that whole support conversation. See, because Proxmox is built on standard open source stuff like Debian and KVM, there's no mysterious proprietary black box that only the vendor can understand. Your team can actually see what's going on. You're in control. It's really just a different philosophy. The Proxmox model isn't about locking you into a crazy expensive support contract for every little thing. It's about empowering your own competent team. It rewards you for doing things right from the start. Good planning, smart architecture, solid documentation. You build for stability. And hey, if you do need that extra layer of help, it's there. 
Certified partners are ready to jump in. So when you put all of this together, what do you get? It's a fundamental shift, a whole new way to think about your infrastructure. Let's take a look at the new playbook for building a modern, totally trusted stack with Proxmox at its core. And this isn't some theoretical fantasy. This is a real-world production stack. We're talking modern Dell servers packed with beefy AMD Epic CPUs, a screaming fast 100 gigabit network dedicated just to the Ceph storage backbone, and massive storage pools all backed by super fast NVMe. Make no mistake, this is a top tier high performance setup running critical business workloads. So how does a company even get to this point? Well, there's this really cool grassroots pattern you see again and again. It often starts small with just one engineer who's been using it at home and knows it's solid. They bring it into the company lab for a small scale test. And when everyone sees that it just works, that success builds the confidence needed to go all in on a full production migration. It earns its trust from the ground up. So the bottom line is this, the whole Proxmox is just for home labs idea. It's over, done. It's not the outsider or some niche tool anymore. It is the real deal running real, revenue-generating, 24-7 production workloads in some of the most demanding environments across the globe. And really, that leaves us with one final thought. When a platform gives you this much control, this much performance, and this much financial freedom from those old painful licensing models, maybe you have to ask yourself, is the real risk for your organization trying it, or is the real risk ignoring it?